Are you digging up the dirt on your dead? Want to find out how? Hear the latest on new family history sources and websites with interesting and fun guests and experts. Find out what other people have been learning about their ancestors. From kings to thieves, inventors to farmers, nothing that's been discovered should surprise us anymore, but it always does. Find out what we mean. Great family history stories and information are on the way now with Extreme Genes, Family History Radio, and ExtremeGenes.com. Dates in the Bible don't quite match the marriage certificate. Uh oh. Hola, genies, and welcome to another edition of Extreme Genes Family History Radio, America's family history show, where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. I am Fisher, your radio root sleuth, fresh back after spending half of last week in San Antonio for the FGS Conference, the Federation of Genealogical Societies. I stayed at a place called the Menger Hotel that first opened in 1859. It's got ghosts. I didn't see any, but it is right across the street from the Alamo. You ought to see it if you ever have the opportunity. Well, we've got some great guests today. First, our friend Janet Havorka from FamilyChartMasters.com. Janet has been digging into the effects of sharing family history with your kids. What does it do for them in their development? Well, there are amazing studies being done on this, and you'll want to hear what she has to say about it. Imagine the tales of your crazy Uncle Ralph could be making your kids smarter and better balanced. Who knew? That's in about nine minutes. And then later in the show, we're going to talk to a dumpster diver named Sean Harvey. He's from the Cincinnati area and recently watched as something was being dumped and he was infuriated when he discovered what it was. You'll want to hear about the lengths he went to to get the piece back into the family to which it properly belonged. Then Tom Perry, our preservation authority from TMCPlace.com, returns talking about photograph scanning and the proper DPI. He'll also tell you about an astonishing new product for keeping track of your heirlooms and other household stuff that I think we've all been waiting for. You're going to want to hear that. Checking the results of our ExtremeGenes.com survey from last week. Did you know an ancestor who had false teeth? Yeah, false teeth are not nearly as common as they once were. 75% of you answered yes. You personally knew an ancestor with the fake choppers. Now, when I was four... My mom's father from Oregon came to visit us in Connecticut, and that was always an event because he lived so far away. He did this thing where he had me twist his left ear, and as I did, he would push on his false teeth with his tongue, and out they would come from his mouth. Well, of course, as a preschooler, I thought this was fantastic. And so when he came with my folks to pick me up from preschool one day, I invited my grandfather in front of all the teachers and my little friends to show everyone how his teeth would come out. I mean, who else in the world could do that? Mom and Gramps hushed me up pretty quick, and that was the end of that. Okay, this week, our survey at ExtremeGenes.com reads as follows. How far back does your earliest ancestral photo go by generation? Parent? Grandparent? Great-grandparent? Second great-grandparent? Third great-grandparent? Fourth great-grandparent? Or earlier? This will be an interesting one. Cast your vote now at ExtremeGenes.com. Okay, a couple of things about the show. Everyone in San Antonio went nuts for our free Extreme Genes podcast app. If you have an iPhone or an Android, your app store has it. Just type in Extreme Genes, press the download button, and it is yours. You can catch up on all of our previous shows with all kinds of information with terrific expert guests and great stories at the push of a button. If you have a great story of discovery or an ancestor you'd like to brag about, email me at fisher at extremegenes.com or call our toll-free find line at 1-234-56-GENES. That's 1-234-56-GENES, G-E-N-E-S. We would love to hear about it. And if you have comments or questions, we'd love to hear those, too. You can also like us on our Extreme Genes Facebook page. It is time once again for your family histoire news from the pages of ExtremeGenes.com. Our first story has to do with weather. 
If you have early New England ancestry, as I do and many Americans do, you might not know, as I didn't, that on this past August 26th, it was the 379th anniversary of a hurricane that is thought to have been the largest ever to pound southern New England. It's referred to as the Great Colonial Hurricane of 1635. Yeah, based on accounts of Massachusetts written at the time, some 46 people died. The storm surge was in the area of 20 feet, and sustained winds were estimated at 135 miles an hour. This storm happened less than 15 years after the arrival of the Pilgrims at Plymouth. Their governor, William Bradford, wrote that the hurricane, quote, blew down sundry houses and uncovered others. Diverse vessels were lost at sea, and it made many of the Indians to climb into trees for their safety. By today's standards, the National Weather Service says the Great Colonial Hurricane of 1635 was a Category 3, much more powerful than the Great Hurricane of 1938, with a storm surge of 10 to 12 feet in Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. That storm, of course, killed many more people, over 600, as the New England states were much more populated than they had been in 1635. It is unbelievable to me that even with the small population of the time, only 46 folks lost their lives in 1635. Discovery.com has a great story about the discovery of a cave near the ocean at Gibraltar. In the back of the cave, the bedrock was found to be marked with a type of grid, or as they call it, a hashtag. Scientists now believe that a Neanderthal created that artwork using a stone tool some 39,000 years ago by the light of a campfire. The place is called Gorham's Cave and was discovered two years ago. It's the first time researchers had ever found something that suggests a Neanderthal may have created art. The director of the Gibraltar Museum, Clive Finlayson, says the work was clearly intentional, not just a random effort. He also noted significantly that the design was an indication of abstract thinking, suggesting that Neanderthals may have been much closer to humans cognitively than ever thought before. To really nail down whether the design was intentional, the researchers decided to try to recreate the original markings elsewhere in the cave using stone tools that previous researchers had left behind over half a century ago. Their conclusion? The work was indeed deliberate and not the result of cutting up animal skin against the rock bed. Nonetheless, the researchers say the work is very fundamental and far from the type of art that could be created by a human being. It's a fascinating story, of course, and you can read all the details from our link at ExtremeGenes.com. And that's your Family Histoire News for this week. And coming up next, she is a well-known family history speaker and creates the most amazing family history charts. And recently, she's been delving into special research that is showing that family history for children actually increases their intelligence. You're going to want to hear more about this. It's coming up next with Janet Havorka in three minutes on Extreme Genes Family History Radio and ExtremeGenes.com. Your priceless 8mm home movies and your precious family videos are deteriorating right now. Heat, moisture, insects, dust, mold, time, they're all robbing you of your family's memories. It's time to preserve those treasures right now by digitizing them at TMCPlace.com. They've been preserving memories for over 40 years. Home movies, videos, audio tapes, vinyl records, photos, slides, and even scrapbooks. Whether your treasures are enduring the humidity of Massachusetts or the heat of Arizona, tmcplace.com can digitize your audio and images without harming the originals and returning them to you with free shipping both ways on most orders. tmcplace.com can even let you track your package in real time with a special GPS tracking device. Trustworthy, experienced, affordable. Call tmcplace.com toll-free at 1-866-483-1717 to talk to Extreme Genes Preservation Authority Tom Perry about your project or order online at shop.tmcplace.com. While we all love diving into the deep end of our gene pool, don't forget about capturing the histories of those who are still with us. Go to StoryWorth.com to start your family's story today. Each week, StoryWorth.com will email a question to people whose stories you wish to preserve. Questions like, tell us about the day you got engaged, or what do you remember about your grandmother? All they have to do is reply with a story, either by email or by telephone. 
That story is then forwarded to the family and securely stored in a private online storybook. It doesn't get any simpler. You can enroll up to six storytellers for, get this, just $49 a year. You'll get a free one-month trial. And for a limited time, Extreme Jeans listeners get an additional 10% discount at StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Jeans. That's StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Jeans. Is your family story worth 13 cents a day? Sign up now at StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Jeans. Simple, secure, effective. Your story is worth telling. You know, there's nothing more exciting than walking where your ancestors walked and seeing what they saw. Hi, it's Fisher here, and I know I've done it. It's life-changing. And right now, Alan McKay Tours is teaming up with Ancestry Tours for a Great Britain Ancestry Tour. It's happening October 16th through 24th. Fly from your home city to London on October 16th, arriving the morning of the 17th, when you'll enjoy your first day touring England's ancient capital. If you choose, three days out of the trip are dedicated to family history Research with professional experts in London, Manchester, Liverpool, and Edinburgh, Scotland. You might have your own agenda in these places, but what an opportunity. Hurry, space is limited for this exciting Great Britain Ancestry Tour, October 16th through 24th. Call Alan McKay Tours today at 801-917-1131. That's 801-917-1131. Prices vary depending upon city of departure. Call now and get a $50 per person Extreme Jeans discount. Here's the opportunity you've been waiting for. And welcome back to Extreme Genes Family History Radio and ExtremeGenes.com. It's America's Family History Show. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth, with my good friend Janet Havorka. She is back. And uh, Janet and I just ran into each other in San Antonio at the FGS conference. And it was a great time, wasn't it, Janet? We had a great time. San Antonio is a beautiful place. It is great yeah. to have you back on the show. And I'm going to admit right now that I've pushed Janet just a little bit out of her comfort zone. Because Janet's working on this thing that, and I'm going to leave it to you to describe, Janet, but you're not ready yet. I mean, you're not done. But I think it is so cool and so important that you found so much on this anyway that maybe we start introducing people to the concept and where you're going with this. And then when we get your final report, you know, we can go in that direction. So let's start out with this. And I like your comparison here with smoking, say, back in the 50s. Yeah. So in the 50s, uh, we knew smoking wasn't good for you, but we couldn't put your finger on it, right? Well, we've known for a long time that family history is good for you. Like, the beginning of my book, I talk about emotional healing and realizing your potential, finding a hero in your life. I talk about being enveloped in love and the strengthening of relationships that it comes from, and then the perspective that it gives you on life. Well, about three months after I published my book, there was some publicity on a psychology study that got me curious that was talking about the same kind of stuff but calling it different things. Instead of calling it perspective on life, it was calling it resilience that family history brings to children, and I can give you some more details on that, too. Or instead of enveloping them in love and and building strength in relationships, it was calling it giving your family a common narrative. And what I'm finding is, and you're right, I'm in the middle of this, so you're going to have to stay tuned, but it's basically that the psychology community has been talking about this for a long, long time. They're just using different words than a lot of us are, and a lot of them are buried in scholarly studies and things like that. But they've known for a long time that family history is a key, important part of raising healthy children and being an emotionally healthy adult. And so just like in the 50s, you knew smoking wasn't good for you, but you couldn't quite put your finger on it. But then in the 60s and 70s, you know, we found out that there's all these carcinogens and things like that, and it's, it's come into our common culture now that there are fewer smokers and it's not healthy. I'm hoping that this is the start of really coming to know scientifically and into our our cultural narrative that family history is really an important part of raising healthy children and being a good parent, but also being emotionally healthy yourself. What I I like about what you just said here was uh, a new word that was kind of introduced because we typically speak about it as, as providing a foundation and I think it's more philosophical as most family historians like to look at it, because we see these effects all the time as we share things with children. But you use the word resilience, and resilience indicates to me strength. And that's something that maybe we don't observe so much, but science is now beginning to prove. That's exciting. Yes, and these are psychology studies with 
children and adolescents, and, and they've done um, blind studies and all sorts of things to study what family history does for youth or for adults. And it really is, it, as my friend Amy Coffin says, she said, boom goes the science. You know, we've known this, but now I'm finally kind of uncovering the science to this. You know, we've known for 15 years that family dinners are important, uh, and the psychology world has known that when you go to therapy, sometimes it's about your parents and even your grandparents, but we haven't quite put our finger on what it is. And what I'm starting to find is that it's this intergenerational transmission. It's this way that we pass things down and understanding it and knowing about your family history is a cleaner and, and more emotionally healthy way to pass things down. So yeah, resilience is a big one. And if you think about it, it really isn't rocket science. Resilience is something that happens at the dinner table when mom or grandma says, oh, you can deal with your piano lessons. Your uncle had to deal with that too. And then pass me the piece, you know, just, just move on with life. You, your family has dealt with it, and so you can deal with it, too. Now, you mentioned um, I was at one of the talks that you gave not too long ago at a, at a family history conference, and you talked about a challenge in your life that came along, and you were helped out by something that happened to you way back, what, in the Depression or something like that. Can, can you review that with us? Yeah, yeah. I, I talk about that in my book as well, but... And again, I knew what it was, but I just didn't have scientific backing to it. The experience that happened to me was I went through a really harsh divorce at a very young age, and it kind of blew my world apart. I had a I had a really pristine childhood, um, got married, and thought everything was perfect, and I was going to be with this person forever. And within about a year, year and a half, that all dissolved. And it blew my world apart. I couldn't understand what was happening, and I had a lot of emotional issues from that. And at that same time, I was given a history of my great-grandmother. It was just 20 pages or so that she had written, and she had lost her husband at a similar age. She had two children at the time, and her husband had died from an appendicitis attack while he was on a business trip. And she talked about how lonely it was, and she talked about a lot of the same issues that I was dealing with. But I knew her at the time. She was over 80, 82 or so. And I knew who she'd grown up to be, and I knew that things were going to be okay. And that gave me that push to say, I can do this too. It's in my DNA. You know, you find a family hero, and every family has them, no matter how dysfunctional. Somebody, somewhere, there's a hero. If not, keep looking. You know, there's a hero in there. This great-grandmother kind of became a hero to me that she survived that and moved through and done other things, and I knew that I could be okay too, and it gave me resilience. It gave you and, the resilience, um, right? It gave me that perspective on life that the current crisis isn't the only important part, that you have resilience because other people have gone before you and, and made it through as well. And if you could give something to a teenager, it, by definition, a teenager needs that perspective and that resilience. You think about a kid who's a teenager, and where were any of us when we were in our teens? You know, we're trying to find our way in a social world. We're thinking about, oh, where am I going to go to college? What am I going to do for a career? I mean, our, our time frame and our time experience is so limited. But, of course, how do we know that? We haven't lived any longer than that. So, yeah. so in exactly. essence, by going back, I guess, and gathering all this material, or at least having it shared with us at that age, it makes sense to me that our roots get dug deeper and somehow we gain more life experience through the life experience of those who came before us. Absolutely. Uh, Emory University, I think we talked about this a little bit last time I was on your show, uh, the psychology department at Emory University, uh, Marshall Duke and Robin Salouche have been studying this uh, with adolescents. They've been studying what they know of their family history. They've developed a 20-question test to kind of test children about their family history, and then they've gone through and tested those children with other psychological tests and have found that adolescents who know more about their family history and have a better sense of what they call the intergenerational self, do better in therapy, they do better with tragedy, they have more uh, self-understanding, and they're able to deal with the big struggles of life. But then I, I found another study I got to tell you about um, that was in the European Journal of Social Psychology, um, and this study actually tests family history and thinking about family history versus intelligence, wow. uh, intelligence tests. You actually score higher on intelligence tests. And they did four studies. The first one is that 
they had people think about their deep roots, like the 15th century, like their ancestors in the 15th century. They had a second group thinking about great-grandparents. And then a third group, the control group, just thought about their last shopping trip. And the people who had been thinking about their ancestors scored higher on intelligence tests. The second one, they had them construct a family tree for a few minutes. And then the control group thought about a shopping experience. Again, the people who were contemplating their ancestry did better on intelligence tests. The third one, the first group spent some time thinking about family members, and the second group spent some time thinking about good friends. The people who had been thinking about family members scored higher on intelligence tests. And then the fourth one, and this is the most interesting one, they called the likability test, and that was they had a group thinking about the positive aspects of their ancestors. They had another group thinking about negative aspects of their ancestors, and then a third control group. And the two groups who were thinking about their ancestors, even the negative ones, scored higher on intelligence tests. Isn't that interesting? Because you would think that that the the negative ones might have a a bad influence on kids or something because they think they come from bad roots or something. But, you know, obviously, as you've mentioned before, we all come from scoundrels and heroes. And there's a little scoundrel in our heroes and a little hero in our scoundrels. Well, you can learn just as much about decisions and consequences of life. And you can learn just as much from those scoundrels as you can from the heroes. And and like we said, there's some of all of that in everybody, too. That's one of the beauties of family history, too, is it teaches you to be more generous to everyone, because you can see that over the span of a life, people make mistakes and, and people do better and they struggle. All people struggle against what they're given in life. And and it just makes you a more generous person, too, I think. Well, you know, it's anyway. a fascinating study, and I'm glad you're uh, you're pursuing this, and you're going to be doing lectures on it in a book, I would assume. I am. I'm, I've got a lecture for Roots Tech in February, and then I'll be publishing stuff on my blog, uh, the Zap the Grandma Gap blog. Um, I'll be publishing uh, things there that I'm finding out. And, yeah, I may have to write another book about this <laughs> because it's really fascinating stuff about what we know that knowing about your family history can do for you emotionally. It's just, it's just emotionally healthy. Emotionally you know. and in intelligence. And in intelligence, and probably I expect to find more, too. <laughs> She's Janet Hervorka from FamilyChartMasters.com. Janet, always great to have you on the show. Fascinating stuff you're learning there and sharing with us. And thanks so much yeah. for your time. Thanks for having me on. And coming up next, he's a guy who never served in the military but has an enormous respect for the military. And he recently made a discovery that made a family whole. You're going to want to hear this hero's story coming up next in three minutes on Extreme Genes, Family History Radio and ExtremeGenes.com. Hello, Extreme Jeans listeners. I'm Larry Gelwix, the getaway guru and host of the Travel Show radio broadcast with the hottest travel deals on the planet. And now you can travel more and pay less by joining me on our Travel Show podcast. Cruises, tours, resort hotels, airline tickets, stay close to home or travel the world. I'll show you how to travel more and pay less. Go online to columbusvacations.com. That's columbusvacations.com. Click on radio. And then click on podcast. It's really that simple. ColumbusVacations.com, radio and podcast for the hottest travel deals on the planet. Had a brick wall in your family tree? Don't know how to break through it? Get professional help from Heritage Consulting Genealogy Research Services. Speak directly with an experienced genealogical researcher, not a salesperson, by calling toll-free 1-877-537-2000. When you call, ask how you could win a free one-hour consultation with an expert genealogist. Heritage Consulting Genealogy Research Services. With over 35 years of research experience, visit HeritageConsulting.com. Did you know your family's memories are being destroyed a little at a time every day. It's true. Old home movies, slides, photos, and audio recordings fade over time. The longer you delay the digitizing of these priceless artifacts, the more likely it is they'll be gone one day. That's why you need to call the Multimedia Center. I brought in VHS videotape and had them transferred to DVD. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to transferduplication.com. And 
welcome back to Extreme Genes Family History Radio, America's Family History Show. It is Fisher here, and I'm excited to have this guy on the line, Sean Harvey from uh, the Cincinnati area. Hi, Sean. Welcome to the show. Hi, how are you all? We are doing great, and so glad to have you on because uh, you're a hero to me. I mean, I'm always searching the Internet to try to find interesting stories to share on the show, and yours just really caught me immediately. It's like, i got to talk to this guy. Let's well, just set this you. up a little bit. You were, uh, were you working? Where were you when you had this experience? Um, I'm currently unemployed, so I do flea marketing, and I do uh, picking, dumpster diving. Dumpster diving. Can, Absolutely. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> something that I can sell or something I can scrap. Okay. Yeah. And, and what's some of the best stuff, by the way, over the years that you've found doing that? Well, I find some older suitcases, which they sell. I just, you know, I can find all kinds of things in there. And so you, you're eyeing this dumpster this one day, not far from your home, and what do you see? It was actually a dumpster that was in my storage unit. Okay. And as I drove out to get some gas for the truck, get me something to drink, I noticed this guy unloading his storage unit. And when I came back through, he was gone. I looked in the dumpster, and I found pretty much new stuff. I pulled out this uh, rubber tote, and on the top of it, there was this binder that had a tribute to fallen officers, most of us from Cincinnati. I took that down to the Media Police Station. They turned it over to Cincinnati Police. But below it was this gentleman's plaque of ribbons, metal. It had his dog tag in it. World War II era ribbons and medals in a dumpster. Unbelievable. Yeah, I just couldn't let that go. To, I got extremely, I started fuming. Well, it, now this was kept in a, was it framed? How was it presented? Yeah, it was in a frame. Okay. It was done neat. And how large was it? Every bit of 10 by 12. So it's a good it's size. More. And how many medals and ribbons were in there? See, there's a marksman medal, a sharpshooter's medal, four ribbons, his dog tag, a patch of the Tigers uniform, you know, plus there's a picture of him and his wife that were in it. It makes you wonder how it ever left the family, doesn't it? Well, from what I heard, the one grandson, he got all bent out of shape with the family anyway. He, he took it. He stole it from his uncle or his dad. And then he I sold it, or, or was it the guy you actually saw, do you think? It was the guy that I actually saw. He was a relative wow. because I pointed him out in the one picture. No kidding. There was a family photo, and I pointed him out, and they said, yeah, that's the one that's he's estranged from the family. Well, let's go forward, Sean. You, you, you found this stuff in the dumpster, and you're fuming mad, and now what did you do next? Because obviously you don't know who these people are. I took it to the administration over here in Batavia, Ohio, and they ran his name. They said they couldn't find it. And I asked them if they wanted They said, no, they couldn't do that because it would be a conflict of interest because he's a veteran. So they gave me the number of the reporter, Cliff Rattle of the Cincinnati Inquirer. He's the one that went and did all the legwork. He called me up, and uh, he wanted to know about the whole story, and he actually did the get-together. So he got you back together with the family? Yeah. Now, tell me about that experience. Did you keep it until you presented it to them, or was it in somebody else's hands and you were just present? How'd that work? I... Gave it to Mr. Rattle so he could get the information off the dog tag and some other things. And he did that part, and then he gave it back to me, and then I presented it to them at the reunion. So it was a family reunion put together just for this, I assume? Yes. So what was yeah. that like? What were the feelings like? What was said? It was, uh, it was highly emotional. I usually don't, you know, get worked about things like that, but just to see their faces, it was just outstanding i mean it it was just truly emotional i you know i can't really put into words i can see it kind of chokes you up right now thinking about it yeah it does i mean because that meant so much to them and uh just giving it back to them knowing that they had it the son had one of his dog tags in like i said in this shadow box was the other dog tag and of course a picture of his mom and dad and you know just to you know know that they got that back was something that um uh, it's it was rewarding for you yes it was and they're really easy going people um to treat some of these metals like that throw it in a dumpster well, that's just totally wrong. If you don't want it, take it to your nearest VFW hall 
or American Legion post and treat it with respect. Are you a yes. are you a veteran, Sean? No, I've done mechanics and sales for uh, most of my life, mm-hmm. but I regret not signing up. Back in the day, so you you because you have great admiration, obviously, for uh, these veterans. Yes, I do. My dad's a veteran. My uh, great uncles were veterans. My one great uncle, he served on a couple battleships during World War II that somehow he survived, but both of them got sunk. Oh. I want to say the one was Louisiana. My brother served in the Air Force during the last part of the uh, Vietnam conflict. Half the kids that are out here today, they don't, they don't, they don't know what these guys went through. Mm-hmm. So this guy was in the Battle of the Bulge, and their casualty rate was about eighty oh. percent. Are you guys in touch now? Are you staying? You must be part of their family, as far as they're concerned. <laughs> yeah, I'm staying in touch with them. Sean, you're a hero. In I'm absolutely your own way. Oh, you are. To take the effort to go and do that. I mean, uh, there are many things that are found that are, affect a lot of families that people just toss aside or or never make an effort to reach out and, and get those back into the hands they belong. And I'm so glad you did this. The way I look at it is what may not mean nothing to you means a lot to somebody else. That's right. And here you are, a guy who's trying to make a living by finding a few things. You could have sold that. I would assume. Well, yeah, I had an. I did have an offer on it. Somebody saw it in my truck when I was at the flea market, and he wanted it. And uh, he offered me twenty dollars for it. And I said no. I just brought it up here to show the uh, other people what some idiot did. And they was kind of a uh, because a couple of them that set up with me are are veterans, and uh, they, you know, they just told me I was doing the right thing. But they was kind of pissed off too. Right. Well, I'm sure the Reese family will love you forever for what you've done. Sean Harvey from Cincinnati. Thank you so much for your time. And thanks for doing what you did. I think it inspires a lot of other people to do the right thing. All I can say is shake a hand of a veteran, thank them for serving, just respect them. Thank you so much, Sean. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me on. And coming up next, our Preservation Authority, Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. He's got some great advice for you when it comes to scanning your photographs. What's the best DPI? And he's also got a great invention he just found out about. You're going to want to hear about it later on in the show. It's all coming up in three minutes on Extreme Genes, Family History Radio and ExtremeGenes.com. You know, when it comes to family history, there's nothing quite like the thrill of the hunt and the excitement generated by every new discovery. Who were your immigrant ancestors? What ship did they come over on? Why did they come when they did? Did they participate in any military campaigns that took place in their day? What personal challenges did your forefathers and mothers endure? Heritage Consulting, Genealogy Research Services can get you the answers to many of these questions and more. They've been providing professional research and consultation services since 1970. Call toll-free 1-877-537-2000 to speak directly to a professional family history researcher. Heritage Consulting can research, collect, analyze, and interpret the countless documents your ancestors generated throughout their lives and present the findings to you in an attractive book or in an electronic format. The cost? Far less than you'd expect for far more than you can imagine. 877-537-2000 or go to heritageconsulting.com. While we all love diving into the deep end of our gene pool, don't forget about capturing the histories of those who are still with us. Go to StoryWorth.com to start your family's story today. Each week, StoryWorth.com will email a question to people whose stories you wish to preserve. Questions like, tell us about the day you got engaged, or what do you remember about your grandmother? All they have to do is reply with a story, either by email or by telephone. That story is then forwarded to the family and securely stored in a private online storybook. It doesn't get any simpler. You can enroll up to six storytellers for, get this, just $49 a year. You'll get a free one-month trial. And for a limited time, Extreme Genes listeners get an additional 10% discount at StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Genes. That's StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Genes. Is your family story worth 13 cents a day? Sign up now at StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Genes. Simple, secure, effective. Your story is worth telling. 
You know, there's nothing more exciting than walking where your ancestors walked and seeing what they saw. Hi, it's Fisher here, and I know I've done it. It's life-changing. And right now, Alan McKay Tours is teaming up with Ancestry Tours for a Great Britain Ancestry Tour. It's happening October 16th through 24th. Fly from your home city to London on October 16th, arriving the morning of the 17th, when you'll enjoy your first day touring England's ancient capital. If you choose, three days out of the trip are dedicated to family history research Research with professional experts in London, Manchester, Liverpool, and Edinburgh, Scotland. You might have your own agenda in these places, but what an opportunity. Hurry, space is limited for this exciting Great Britain Ancestry Tour, October 16th through 24th. Call Alan McKay Tours today at 801-917-1131. That's 801-917-1131. Prices vary depending upon city of departure. Call now and get a $50 per person Extreme Jeans discount. Here's the opportunity you've been waiting for. You have found us, America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes, Family History Radio. It is Fisher here, the Radio Root Sleuth, with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. He is our preservation authority. Tom, you're on the road. How are things? Awesome. I just love being on the road, crossing the country, helping people preserve their memories. That's what it's all about. Well, and you know, that's kind of the theme we're hearing today, like our guest Sean here a little bit ago, who uh, rescued those medals from a dumpster and got them back to the family that they belong to. John is truly a hero. I mean, what he did was incredible. You know, we have people come in our store all the time that talk about, oh, hey, I've got all these photos. I have no idea who they are. I'm just going to throw them away. I don't want to transfer. I go, no, 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 no. Give them to me. Let me scan them, put them up on the web, and let's find out who these people are. And then a tragedy a customer told us about is he was living out west, and his mother and sister were living back east. And she passed away. And he was right in the middle of a deal and couldn't get back for several days. And by the time he had gotten back, his sister had thrown away his mother's entire filing cabinet of family history documents. Oh, no, no, no. Did she know what she was doing? According to him, she kind of did. There's been kind of a little rift between them. And the daughter always felt like the mother was spending too much time on family history. And I think there's a little bit of vengeance in it, which makes it even sadder. Oh, and so he couldn't rescue this stuff. It was gone. Nope, it was put in one of those giant dumpsters. The big dump truck picked it up, hauled it off, sent it to the farm where old things go to die. And oh. it's just totally unfortunate. I mean, years and years and years of research, family history, totally gone just because somebody wanted to be an idiot, I guess. Oh, well, sounds like vengeance to me. Well, let's talk about photographs a little bit here. It's been a while since we've been okay. on that topic. And I was just down in San Antonio at the Federation of Genealogical Societies Convention. And I picked up a book that I was very excited about. It was about identifying old photographs based on the fashion styles of the times. And they showed them in five-year periods, the collar sizes, uh, single-breasted, double-breasted jackets, hairstyles for the women. And so that was fascinating stuff. And it made me think about uh, some of the things that you talk about in preserving old photos. And it's very important that we do it in the right way, especially when it comes to digitizing them. Oh, absolutely. It's very important to digitize in the right way. And like you mentioned, it's great to have some kind of a date. Because sometimes you find an old box of photos and you're thinking, are these in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s? And a great book like you mentioned will help people kind of look at them and kind of discern, oh, you know, based on the size of this collar, based on how they have their hair, you know, is this age of a kid? And we've talked about before, young babies usually always wore dresses, whether they were boys or girls, and you had to look at the part in their hair to tell whether they were a boy or a girl. So all those things will help you in dating your things and finding out, is that Aunt Ethel or is that Uncle Fred as a baby? <laughs> That's a good point, yes. And by the way, the part on the side is how you know if it's a boy. The part down the middle is how you know it's a girl. Yeah, something that simple is so valuable when you're trying to figure out who these people are, when they came, and stuff like that. So... A book like that's invaluable to have with that internet research. It makes it awesome. But photos are so important to preserve. Don't go away enough to do them. Do them as soon as you can because the dyes do go away. They fade, especially if they're around warm areas, if there's sunlight on them. We've had people that have had these family portraits for, you know, 30, 40 years hanging up in their dining room. And unfortunately, there's a window across from it, and they start turning usually red. And what it's doing is killing off the blue dye that's in the photo. But if you grab it soon enough, you can bring it into us or any photo restore across the country can really restore those pictures and make them look just like brand new, but you don't want to wait too long till all the detail's done. Well, that makes a lot of sense. What about digitizing at home? Oh, absolutely. See, a lot of people think you always have to go to a professional to do it. You can buy decent scanning equipment. 
just want to be really, really careful what you get. It depends on what size you're scanning. Like people always call me and say, what DPI should I do that? Well, it kind of depends what size your original is and what size you want to be at. For instance, if you have something like a 2 by 3 and all you want to print is a 2 by 3 you can scan it at 300 DPI and it's fine. Whereas if you have a 2 by 3 and want to print it as an 18 by 24 you want to go a little bit bigger. So it just kind of depends what you have, what you want to do with it. If you have postage size photos, like a lot of the old genealogy pages and family history pages of old, they were almost the size of a postage stamp because that's just a format they used. So you want to make sure you scan those at a super, super high DPI in case somebody wants to make a 3 by 5 or a 5 by 7 of them. So you need to be really, really careful that you watch your DPI. Now, is there a standard that uh, people can just say, you know, if I, if I generally go at this DPI, we're going to be safe? Oh, yeah. Most people, if you want to do, you know, as high as like 4,800 DPI, I mean, you can do anything. You can take a 2 by 3 picture and print it out as a 20 by 30, and a 4,800 <laughs> DPI will be fine. So just kind of be careful with your DPI and also with your megapixels, because those are the things that are really important. And like we talked about before, don't do overkill. Like people say, oh, I want everything scanned in a TIFF. I've got these 5,000 photos. Well, yeah, you can do that, but as far as I'm concerned, and I own the equipment, I don't do all my stuff in TIFFs. I do the majority of them in JPEG. And then we hear the people, well, JPEGs deteriorate. Well, yeah, if you make a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy, that's going to happen. But that's why we tell customers when they come into our store, we make them a disk that says master on it, and then all the duplicates say duplicate. So we tell them, hey, if you run out of dupes and need to make another dupe, go back to your master and make your dupes from that, and you'll never have a problem with JPEG deteriorating. All right, Tom, we're going to take a break, and when we return, let's talk more about photographs, all right? Sounds good. All right, coming up next on Extreme Genes, Family History Radio and ExtremeGenes.com in three minutes. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to Transfer Duplication. Com. Hello, Extreme Jeans listeners. I'm Larry Gelwix, the getaway guru and host of the Travel Show radio broadcast with the hottest travel deals on the planet. And now you can travel more and pay less by joining me on our Travel Show podcast. Cruises, tours, resort hotels, airline tickets, stay close to home or travel the world. I'll show you how to travel more and pay less. Go online to columbusvacations.com. That's columbusvacations.com. Click on radio. Video and then click on podcast. It's really that simple. ColumbusVacations.com, radio and podcast for the hottest travel deals on the planet. And we are back. Final segment, Extreme Genes, Family History Radio, ExtremeGenes.com, America's Family History Show. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. We have Tom Perry on the line. He's on the road this week. He is our preservation authority from TMCPlace.com. You're just telling me off air, Tom, about some amazing discovery you just found that everybody's going to want to hear about. Oh, this thing is just like so groundbreaking. It's amazing. The company is called Estimote, which is E-S-T-I-M-O-T-E, so you can just go Google it. And they have introduced a line of wireless sensors that look like stickers that can be attached to household products, allowing homeowners to keep track of those objects with a smartphone application. Oh, I love that. Oh, I mean, it's so cool. I mean, I would just absolutely love this to organize myself. How it works is these estimate stickers contain what's called an ARM-based processor with flash memory built right into the sticker. So a Bluetooth smart controller, along with sensors, will be able to find things. Also, they have ones with temperature sensors. So if your old movies are getting too hot in the closet or something, say, hey, you know, these things are getting hot. I'll send you a warning. You need to move them. (laughs) And it's amazing. It is. My dad had like 20 photo albums. And it's like, what photo album is what? Where are they? Are they in the kitchen? Are they in the attic? With this smartphone with Bluetooth, you'll be able to find out where they are. You'll be able to identify what they are, almost like a library. Now, I'm not sure how far it works. This is like, you know, breaking news type thing. I'm going to follow up on it, and then next week I'll bring in some more information about it. But these are smartphone-based. They've got the information on them, so it just depends 
how far your signal goes and how strong that they are. All right. It's Estimote is the company. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, T I M O T E. Wow, we're going to have to look into that more. That is amazing. All right, we were talking about photographs here uh, in the previous segment, and I don't think you got through everything you wanted to talk about with that. Oh no, the biggest thing we were kind of talking about was DPI. We kind of went off on another tangent, but let me just give you a few examples of how you want to scan. Like we talked about 300 DPI, we talked about 4800 DPI. 4,800 DPI is your dump truck, and the 300 DPI is your Yugo. But if a Yugo gets you from A to B, then that's fine. Go with it. So you want to look at what size your master is, your photo, and then what size you want it to be when you're scanning. Like I say, I recommend JPEGs. If you have a few to do, either come to a place like us. We're happy to do them for you. You can rent scanners. Some of the guests that we've had on here before, Easy Photo Scan, you can rent really super high on, you know, $5,000 scanners for a week for a few hundred dollars for a family reunion, which is a great way to go. But so basically some normal things, like say you have a two by three. If you're gonna to wanna to go five by seven, you wanna go at least 1200 DPI. If you're going to an 11 by 14, you wanna to go to about 2400 DPI. If you have little like four by sixes, the 1200 DPI kicks in at about 11 by 14. If you go to a five by seven, you wanna go at 1200 DPI once you head a 16 by 20. If you have a master photograph, which a lot of people have the old 8x10s. If you want to just keep it an 8x10, 300 DPI is fine. You don't need to go any bigger. Really? If you want to go, yeah, well, yeah, it's fine. If you want to go to 18 by 24 then you want to go to 1,200 DPI. But my rule of thumb is I look at what a chart says, what they recommend, and then I go one higher. That way I'm safe without bringing in a dump truck, so to speak. Exactly. Now, I know there are a lot of people who are listening either in their cars or at home and going, Tom, you're going way too fast. I can't keep track of this. Do you have this available for them somewhere to look up those kinds of numbers? Yeah, I'll try to get on the Internet, but they can also contact me at asktom at tmcplace.com. Say, hey, can you send me a copy of that DPI listing? And I'm more than happy to forward it to anybody until I actually get it up on the website. All right, that's great. And, of course, the website is tmcplace.com. Dot com. All right. Always great stuff, Tom. Thanks so much for joining us, and have a safe trip on the road. We look forward to having you back in studio next week. Sounds good. I'll be there next week with whistles and bells. All right. <laughs> All right. And thanks once again to Janet Havorka from FamilyChartmasters.com for her insight on the new research in the family history and how it's affecting the intelligence of our kids. And to Sean Harvey of Cincinnati, who rescued a whole bunch of ribbons and medals from a World War II vet out of a dumpster. If you didn't catch it, of course, listen to the podcast. You can find it on iHeartRadio's talk channel and on iTunes starting Monday of every week. Talk to you next week. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family. <laughs>